is up guys welcome back to another geeko what video and in this one i'm going to be building an awesome white themed gaming pc with a difference because while the gpu cpu ram and motherboard are as you'd expect the case is something i've never seen before it's flat pack which could be a really good thing or a really bad thing so i guess there's only one way to find out i'll be running you through my thoughts on not only the case but all the parts in today's build showing you guys how to put it together and looking at performance a little bit later let's do this feeling quite kind of nervous off by looking at the case shall we this is the cooler master cube 500 flat pack now as a recent homeowner i've built many a flat pack furniture in the last little while i'm not sure i kind of want my case to be flat pack but i'm going in with an open mind and there's only one way to find out how this is actually going to function i think the only way to really do this is just open it up i don't want to scratch any of the panels in case there's like panels inside i first saw this at computex in may june time of this year and i thought the case itself was actually pretty cool so i'm hoping that it's coming to fruition in a way that makes sense i think cooler master said that this is like probably more environmentally friendly and cheaper to obviously ship and i guess it takes the whole pc diy thing to another level so let's oh yes that is flat pack there's one piece that's presumably the motherboard tray with the cave management on the back screws instruction manual don't need that <laughs> What is that? That looks like the PSU bracket. The front piece, the front IO piece. Very heavy. Very well built, actually. Fair play. That looks like the rear of the case. So that's obviously the back handle and then all the PCI brackets. And they've removed the two PCI lanes that they think we're going to need. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that's quite neat. And then, oh my goodness me. That looks like top panel. Maybe the, I think the bottom. I reckon that's going to be the bottom. This is not too flat pack so far. It's getting more flat pack. Radiator. Okay, even the feet are installed tempered glass quite a nice tempered glass panel actually i guess as long as it's clear online that this is definitely flat back and doesn't come built cooler master should avoid some nasty surprises I feel like i've got instructions to the matrix here ah right i understand so cooler master could make this text a bit more clear there's very tiny text here that says that's the test bench instructions ah the, is this the main ah right oh cooler master are actually suggesting that you basically install the build as you go so you don't build the case at the start you install the motherboard onto the tray then add the front panels bit of a different way of building a gaming pc which to be honest i'm not really like oh, i don't know i don't really think that's necessary so i'm going to build the case first so we can evaluate the case on its own merits then add the parts in afterwards so the rear panel is probably one of the biggest bits of the jigsaw ah so that goes on kind of like that oh that's quite clever yeah that works i will admit i was a little bit skeptical about this case but it is actually quite easy to install and dare i say i am having a bit of fun in the process can't believe i just said i'm having fun building a flat pack thing here we go look at that we've got a case oh that's quite cool you also get this included radiator mount but i don't think we're going to be needing that as we get standard front and top mounts anyway that's if you're just going to go for a more advanced water cooling setup and then the glass panel for good measure look at that you know what that's quite cool aesthetically won't be for everyone but let's actually go ahead and install all the parts before we make our minds up on appearance and why not start shall we by popping the motherboard the cpu and all that jazz into the case you know what i'm gonna do things differently today i'm gonna try and install the build into the chassis from the very start let's see how this goes as far as the motherboard i'm going to be popping into the case i've gone on brand i've stuck with the color scheme and picked up the nz xt n7 z790 i've been doing a lot of amd ryzen builds lately and i figured it was probably time to show intel a little bit of love their 13700k is one of my favorite cpus on the market right now it's a really really great shout so i'm gonna pop i didn't sound good disaster averted i'm gonna pop the motherboard actually into the case look at that color scheme matches perfectly there we are need to be very careful of the cpu socket as the cover's missing but a few screws on the motherboard will fasten that all into place and i can then add in the cpu intel's core i7 13700k is one of the best options loads of cores loads of threads p cores of course amazing for gaming you'll 
equals good for those background efficiency tasks. And with plenty of overclocking headroom, which our N7Z790 board will also facilitate, we can get a nice performance bump for good measure too. I'm also gonna add in the RAM and SSD at this stage, 32 gigs of DDR5, Corsair Vengeance RGB is gonna do the job very nicely. It's white, it fits the color scheme perfectly well, and there's loads of colors and latency options available, links down below. And I've also picked up this Samsung SSD 990 Pro. Now not the four terabyte, don't actually use the four terabyte version, it's just the one I've got to hand. It's their new flagship drive, and it's actually surprisingly affordable. The one terabyte drive can commonly be found for under $100, which is amazing. Latest pricing and availability will be linked down below as always. And the SSD is gonna hide under the nice little cover on this NZXT motherboard. Once that's in, the cooler is next. And I've got this new Cooler Master Atmos cooler, which is actually packaged very nice. I feel like I'm gonna open some sort of trophy. I suppose that's probably the idea. Let's open her up. This is actually pretty sleek. The radiator with the fans pre-installed and then the actual water block itself. Now, from what I understand, people can actually like 3D print stuff that goes on this water block. So you can actually take off the, the, the top piece somehow. It's actually kind of cool. Intel socket. This is actually really nice how they've actually given me a box full of all the Intel bits. It makes it so simple and for someone who's never built a PC before it means they don't get confused as to why there's so much hardware left at the end. Looking at things we've got the LJ1700 backplate here. We've got the screws and then the brackets we need as well. As far as compatibility for especially GPU lengths go I'm going to mount the radiator at the top of the case. Something a little bit like that. 240 mils for the i7 is going to be fine. Not the coolest radiator running chip, but equally not the hottest running chip in the world. If there's one thing we're seeing now with new GPUs, new CPUs, is they're more power efficient and cooler running than ever, which is great to see, I suppose. Apart from the Ryzen 9 7950X 3D, that's our, our hot boy. And to be fair, the i9. Okay, most modern CPUs are cooler and more power efficient than ever. Then just a simple case of securing the block down. It's gonna sit, I think, a little something like that with the included thumb screws, keeping everything nice and tight. Remember the thermal paste. Don't forget your thermal paste, otherwise you will have CPU overheating problems. The next part and the penultimate component to install, this build is flying by, is the graphics card. Now I have gone for something arguably a little controversial. That's right, I've picked up a 4070 Ti. Now before you all comment and get really angry, of all the Nvidia cards bar the 4090, this is one of the better ones. 12 gigs of VRAM means you're not constrained by the terrible 8 gigs or even 10 gigs you'll find on cheaper cards. It's not the most expensive card in the 40 series lineup. And while AMD's cards with straight rasterization are admittedly a little bit quicker, you do get better ray tracing and DLSS3. Something which to a lot of people is quite important. Plus, this palette card is gorgeous. I have to admit, the color scheme probably came into it a little bit. Although to be fair, there is data behind this decision. The 4070 is a pointless choice now the 7800 XT exists, while the 4060 Ti is frankly a bit of an embarrassment, and the 4060 is beat out by basically everything. Now, I think this is going to fit. My initial calculations said it should fit. It just about fits. So, <laughs> this is a stunning card though, and really, I always feel a bit sorry for Palette because they've done a, such an incredible job with the cooler. It's just a shame Nvidia couldn't make a slightly better GPU, because if they could, I'd want this cooler on every single card ever. It's my favorite white GPU cooler. It just looks incredible. One thing palette if you can next time this heat sink if that was sprayed white unbelievable you've got a white heat sink on let me think the deep cool ak 400 wh is like that same with this if we could powder coat the rear io area that would be amazing i like the gray accents i think the card is built really well just love it makes me so happy anyway let's install it shall we and stop fawning over gpus so <laughs> Push back the clip on the top PCIe slot, get the graphics card, and we're gonna have to do a bit of angle trickery to get it in there. Bit of pressure, he says. There we go, and it's in. Oh baby, that looks amazing. Couple of screws to secure it into place, and really, one more part left to go. And that final component is this, Cooler Master XG Plus 850 Platinum. An 80 plus Platinum, 850 watt power supply with a 10 year warranty, and an RGB screen. Shows us the live wattage, really quite cool. I'm also gonna add in a couple of white sleeve PSU cable extensions where I have them. I haven't got one for the GPU, so just the motherboard cable to set things off quite nicely. What do I think of this case? I think it's pretty cool. I think it's something a little bit different and it's certainly better, I suppose, than what I'd anticipated. Are there other options for this price that are more retractive? Certainly, but at least it's unique. And then with all the cables in, it's time to see how this thing performs. But first, let's see how it looks in the only way we know how. Very predictably, it's time for a Gigawatt Glam Montage. Oh yeah, flat pack, baby. <laughs> The next 
item on the agenda is to check out performance. In Apex Legends at 1440p high, the build pulled in a very respectable 273 FPS on average. The RTX 4070 Ti in this system, while perhaps a little controversial, certainly packs a decent amount of power. Call of Duty's Modern Warfare 2 at 1440p was a similar story. 164 FPS on the average, with decent 90 and 99 percentile results in the region of 140 and 132. Move through into Call of Duty's Warzone 2, very similar in its actual game engine and design to Modern Warfare 2, and the results don't deviate a great deal. In fact, the FPS averages are virtually identical. 163 on average overall, with 146 and 131 for the 90 and 99th percentiles. Starfield at 1440p high was a slightly different story, just 67 FPS on average using these settings in Starfield. It is a notoriously difficult game to run, so even hitting nearly 70 FPS on average is in many ways kind of impressive. Hogwarts Legacy at 1440p high was a slightly better story, 108 frames per second on average, with 97 and 82 for the 90 and 99th percentiles. Well, for a bit of fun at the end, we also tested out Fortnite at 1080p competitive settings and saw an astonishingly high average of over 330 FPS. Wow, wow, wow. You can check out all the parts and make this build possible at the first links in the description below. If you enjoyed it, get subscribed to see more from me. Thanks for watching and as always, we'll see you in the next one.